Well, that's my trail. Not much of a trail. I'm kind of seeing the distance in the upper right there. There's some uh, concrete structures. That's where I'm headed. See up there? That's where we're going. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and we're out in the field this time with the Sony A7R, and we're going to do some HDR photography with this creepy old pool behind me. Um, and I just wanted to go over a few things as far as HDR photography is concerned. Um, it's high dynamic range, and this is a perfect scene for high dynamic range. You can see behind me how bright those windows are, and then in the pool itself it's kind of dark. So if you take one capture, you know, the windows are going to be blown out. So HDR photography, you take multiple exposures at different um, dynamic ranges, and then you can combine the images um, in post-processing. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that on the Sony A7R. And uh, also, I got the Canon 17-40 Ultra Wide Angle Lens uh, mounted with the Metabones 3 lens adapter. So with that wide angle, I'll be able to get some pretty cool compositions inside this pool and this, uh, you know, creepy, abandoned area. So hopefully nobody comes because I don't think I'm supposed to be here. And uh, I'm going to try to make this <clears throat> pretty quick. We'll wrap it up. I'm just going to uh, show you a couple more angles and then I'm going to put the camera on top of the A7R so you can see exactly all the settings and stuff I'm playing with. So you know exactly how to set your camera up if you want to try to, you know, take some HDRs yourself. All right, so stay tuned. First thing I want to do is try to adjust my composition here a little bit. So right now I'm seeing it's a little bit too low. So I'm just going to raise the tripod up a little bit. All right, something like that. There we go. Now I can see into the pool a little better. All right, you want to make sure all your tripod stuff is locked down real tight. So you want to lock that down tight, lock this guy down tight. And then down below here, there's another one. This one here, you want to make sure that's really tight, like so. So now we got a really solid tripod. And give it a little shake, and you can see it's solid as a rock. And that's where we want to be. All right, so from this view, what you're looking at is the Sony A7R, and you can see exactly the screen, you know, the composition that's going on. I want to go over the camera settings. You can see on the bottom I'm using auto ISO, so I want to change that. So I'm just going to turn the scroll wheel here, and I want to go to ISO 100, like so. All right, then I'm going to change my aperture. I'm in aperture priority mode. I'm just going to change my aperture to, I'm going to go to F11. Meh. I'll go to F16 actually. I want everything to be sharp. Then I'm going to move my focus point. So I'm using the flexible spot. And if you hit the C1 button, by default, that will change your focus mode. So I'm going to focus right there. And notice how it locks on. So now I'm going to need to take multiple exposures. And the easiest way to do that is to use the exposure compensation or you can use multiple shots, but I like to use the self timer. So I'm just going to use exposure compensation. And how you do that is there's a wheel right here. You can simply raise it up to plus three and then set the self timer here with the right toggle button. And I'm just going to go to the self timer. I'll go to two second. And I'm doing plus three EV. So I'm going to do that right now. And I can actually, once the focus is set, I'm just going to turn the autofocus off. So now I don't have to worry about the camera focusing anymore. It's just going to be the same focus every time. So I put it, switched it to manual focus on the lens. And ISO 100, F16, the exposure is 4 seconds. So I'm going to take this shot now. Self timer. <clears throat> Remember, it's a 4 second exposure, so... And now you can argue I'm going to have to use the exposure comp wheel here. It's going to shake the camera a little bit. So there is going to be, you know, very, very slight movement. Now you can adjust your exposure. I'm going to do plus two here. I'm going to go for that one. All 
And then I'm going to go to plus one. And you can see I'm just taking multiple exposures. That's all I'm doing at different EV levels. Now I'm going to go to zero. And because it's in manual focus, I don't have to worry about that. Now I'm going to go to negative one. It's really easy to do on the A7R with this exposure comp wheel. See now at negative three, we're starting to see the detail come in from the outside on the windows. See that? There we go. So now if I hit the play, we can go in here and scroll through all our different brightness values. See that? So then we can combine these. One, two, three, four, five, six, and get all the information. Pretty crazy looking downstairs. That was pretty cool. All right, so for this scene, I'm going at, pl I'm just gonna do three frames, plus two, zero, and negative two. All right, so I'm just gonna adjust the exposure comp wheel. Let me just zoom out a little bit. So that's plus two, I'm just gonna go to zero. And here's going to be minus two. There's minus two EVs. Now you can see the windows are still a little bit blown out there, so I'm going to go to minus three just to get a little extra information on the window areas. There we go. That'll do it. All right, guys, so here's the last composition I'm going to take. I'm going to have to get out of here. I'm getting kind of nervous. I really don't think I should be in here. Uh, but anyways, let me just take this last frame. So I'm just going to go to uh, negative three first. All right, negative three. Looks pretty good. Alrighty, that looks pretty good. All right, guys, like I said, I'm going to have to get out of here. It's a little bit creepy, and uh, I'm afraid people might come, and uh, I really don't want to get in trouble. So listen, I'll catch up with you on the computer in a minute, and I'll show you these images that we got, and uh, I'll show you how to process them in Photomatics and Lightroom using the Nick filters, things like that. So here we are in Lightroom 5, and here's the exposures from the creepy pool area. And we got a decent few of frames there. And these are some other photos I was playing with the other day with Layla. But anyway, up here is the first frame. So what I want to do is select the first one, and then I'm going to go all the way to the end and select the last one. By holding the Shift key down, I'm just going to select it. So now I have all of them from this photo here all the way up to the top selected. And then I'm just going to hit development module button up here on the top. 
and I'm going to go into the development module. Then I'm going to scroll down here, go to lens correction, enable lens profile, remove chromatic aberration, profile. I'm going to go to Canon. I was using my 1740, so I'm going to go up to that right here, Canon EF 1740 F4, like so. Pretty cool, right? Color, I'm just going to raise these up to one. Then I just want to hit the sync key. I'm going to do check all. And I don't really need to check all. All I really need to check is the lens correction, but I'm just checking all anyway. Synchronizing. So that's going to synchronize all of them. So now I don't have to worry about the lens correction or anything like that. And you can just hit Command D on a Mac to deselect or Control D or whatever on a Windows machine. But so these are the frames we got. And you can see the lens profile loading there as we're looking at this. So I'm just going to go through and select all these frames and then we'll open them up in Photomatix. So here we go. Got all four, five, six, seven selected. I'm going to do export Photomatix Pro. Align images, I'm going to leave that checked. Cropped align result, that looks good. I like to do by matching features. Sometimes you might have to change the alignment options though. Removing ghosts, I'm not going to use that. That's for when there's moving objects. There's nothing moving in this scene, so I don't need that at all. Noise, that's not an issue. I was using ISO 100. Reduce chromatic aberrations, that's probably not an issue either. I'm going to leave that unchecked. And I don't need to see that. Automatically re-import, that I do want. And I like adding the suffix here, so I'm going to leave that as well. And uh, that looks good to me, so I'm going to hit export. Now it's aligning the images here. All right, so here we go into Photomatix. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to tone mapping up here on the top left. There's all different ways you can blend the photos together. And um, exposure fusion is one method. Tone mapping is another method. So I'm just going to go with tone mapping for now. And I'm going to go through these presets over here on the right so you can see you know, what the different effects are. I like to use the presets to help get in the general direction that I want to go. So, um, you know, depending. Sometimes photographic is a good starting place, sometimes not. A lot of times I just use default and work from there. Uh, natural sometimes works pretty good, but in this case, not so much. The surreal ones I don't really care for so much. They're, they're way overdone. But um, sometimes they can work if you're going to go to black and white. Enhanced, it's not too bad. It's not a bad starting point, actually. Deep and smooth sometimes look pretty good. Deep's not bad if I back off some settings. Yeah, smooth too. Outside's a little bit blown. It also has some nice um, black and white presets in here. And then it's got adjusted settings, fusion, all that. I'm just going to go with the old default, start there. So first thing I'm going to do is adjust the gamma, because right now it looks like overall the image is too bright. So let me bring that down. Something like that, let's see. Alright, something like that. Temperature, I'm going to warm it up a touch. Black point, that looks pretty good for now. White point, I need to back off because outside. Alright, right around there is not too bad. Now what I need to do is strength. I need to back that off a bit. Light. Now this is all kind of feel and experience. You kind of got to play with this and uh, you get the hang of it over time. Lighting adjustments kind of evens out the light smoothing and uh, makes it look more realistic. It Depending on what the image is and, and how much contrast you have in different areas, it really depends on where you need to have these sliders. I'm going to do additional editing in the NIC program, so I'm not too worried about all the little details in here. But I do want to see how this is rendering. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's see about over here. That looks pretty good too. Alright, so I can drag up the color saturation a little bit. Alright, a little too much, but I just want to get a little bit of color in there. That looks pretty good. Alright, I think that's a pretty good 
starting point for this image. So now we can go into back into Lightroom and then use the Nick filters and really bring out some uh, some extraordinary detail in this HDR file. So I'm just going to click actually over here on the presets. I'm going to save this. Save preset. So this way when I bring in the next photo I can just apply the same setting. I'm just going to call it creepy pool. All right, save. Good enough. Now I'm just going to do save and re-import and this will just pop up in um, Lightroom 5 once it's done with the uh, tone mapping and detail enhancing. So now we can go on to the next photo and we can do that in Photomatics. And that one I just did three exposures. I did minus two plus, I did plus two, zero, and minus two. And then I did it again. And I got a couple more frames. This one here looks pretty dark. So I can do these. Export these to Photomatics. Export Photomatics Pro. And I'll use all the same features. And that other one should have imported. Here it is. Let me do, I'm going to edit this in Pre Sharpener. First thing I'm going to do edit original. I'm just going to edit the original TIFF file. I didn't apply any Lightroom settings yet. Alright, so pre-sharpener just opened up. This is a Sharpener Pro 3.0 and it's the raw pre-sharpener. I like to use this for my HDR files. It works great and you can see if you look at the bottom right of the um, screen you can see how good of a job it's doing. I mean it's really bringing that detail out. And yeah, Sorry about that. That's Photomatics running in the background. All right, so you can see the detail coming out quite nice there. So I'm just going to leave that where it is. I'm happy with those results. I don't like to go too far in this program. I usually back it off a little bit, but in this case, the image is just slightly a little bit softer because I combined so many, seven frames. So I'm just going to leave it where it is right there, 50%, and click Save. And that's going to save the file, and then I'll have the updated version in Lightroom 5 in a second. All right, so I'm just going to hit two. This is the HDR file, so I'm going to hit actually the number three. I like to set my HDRs to a rating, so this way I can find them easier. So I know I already sharpened this one. I pre-sharpened it, so I'm going to get put the rating of three on it. All right, and then uh, it still needs additional editing, but I'm going to go to this uh, other file quick. It looks a little dark so far. So jack up the luminosity a little bit. All right. It's a little bit blown, a little bit bright out there. Borderline blown. It's all right though. I'll be able to pull that back. All right. That's good. I'm going to hit save and re-import. We have one other image here. The, the when I was recording the video, this was the actual frame I took. But then I actually after I was done recording the video, I moved and zoomed in a little bit. You know what I'm going to do to this one? I'm going to go to detail. I'm just going to raise the sharpening up a little bit and raise the masking up and that'll just apply a little bit of sharpening to the edges and then I'm just going to hit sync hit synchronize again and that's just going to add that little bit of sharpening to all the images then I'm just going to go to export Photomatix Pro boom and then hit export again and it's going to open up and apply the same preset pretty much because that's what I used last but if I change it, I could also save it as a new preset if I want. So let's see, the other one should be imported here, and here it is. So I'm just going to give this a rating of 2, because I didn't do anything to it yet. So this is a raw HDR file. This is what I like to call it, because it's just HDR right out of Photomatix. So I need to apply the pre-sharpener first, and then I'll put a star rating of 3 on it. But I'm going to wait because right now I'm pumping out those images for Photomatix and I don't want to bog my computer down more than it already is. So stand by. And then we'll edit these three HDR files using the Nick filters and they're going to come out pretty awesome. You'll see. All right. So here we are back in Photomatix and you can see that this preset worked pretty well with this image. It looks a little bit sharper this time. 
because I pre-sharpened it a bit. But the exposure looks good to me. Outside, you can see the detail a little bit there in the sky. Interior looks great. We got all the information. So I'm just going to click Save and Reimport. I'm going to go back to the original file here. And then I'm going to, we're going to open this guy up in the Nick software. So let me just find that one and mark it here with the star rating, two. So we can find that later. All right. I can actually filter now. So just these, the ones that have a rating will come up. Notice here on the filter. Works pretty good. All right. So here's the three frames we got. Not too bad. All right, so let's open this up. Just going to do an edit in, and I'm going to go to the Color Effects Pro 4. And I'm going to go to Edit Original. I'm going to play with the crop later. So I know the crop looks a little off, or it looks off to me a little bit, but we're going to fix that uh, after. I just want to get all the sharpening and all the editing done, and then we'll play with the final edited version. We'll play with the crop, and we'll do some fine tuning with the uh, editing in Lightroom 5. Don't be intimidated here. There, if you have this software, there's a lot of filters, okay? A lot of filters. If you have all selected here, it can be pretty overwhelming. But And you can do it in a number of orders, you know? You can, there's a number of ways to go about this. So don't worry about if you see somebody doing it in a different order than I'm doing it. It doesn't make a difference. You can do it however you want, bottom line. So that's part of the fun. So um, I have a couple starred here. So if you star them, you can have them added to your favorites. That's basically what that does. So these are the ones I usually use. So this is where I'm going to start with tonal contrast. It automatically adds what you used last. And it looks pretty good to me so far. It added a nice bit of punch. Added a bit of contrast. Not too much saturation. A little bit. Could add a little bit more. All right. Yeah, you can see the uh, chromatic aberration there is pretty bad. We could fix that though in Lightroom, no problem. All right, so let's see what it looks like over here. Looks good. You can see it's pretty sharp. So now check this out. Down here you can click Add Filter. So now we have a empty filter slot here. We can go over here and add another one. So I'm going to go with this Pro Contrast. That's what I like to use next takes a little bit for this to calculate. The image is gigantic, 36 megapixel, 16-bit TIFF file. So I'm not exactly sure the file size. I can find that out, actually, why this is loading. But um, it, it takes a minute to calculate. So once it's done calculating, you can slide the contrast slider over, and then it actually reacts. So you can adjust for color cast. I like to play with that. Sometimes it works good, sometimes not. Sometimes you can't really notice much of a difference. Contrast, you can see, makes a huge difference. See that? So I'm not going to go too crazy with it. Somewhere right around there. Looks pretty good. And then dynamic contrast is, it almost works a little bit like a fill. See that? Shadow contrast. So you can play with that. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Now we can click on Add Filter. And we can go and play around here. We got Glamour Glow. We got Brilliance and Warmth. I'm going to click on Brilliance and Warmth. And what I want to do is drag up the saturation a little bit. And it's calculating, so it's going to take a second. All right, that looks pretty good. Back it off just a touch. I don't want it to be too, you know, glowing purple too much right here in the foreground. I'm just going to bring up the warmth a little bit. Actually, let me bring down the temperature a little cooler. Looks a little cold, something like that. All right. I'm going to add another filter. And I'm going to do a Glamour Glow. Let's see what that does. It's calculating. I'll drag the saturation up. And the glow there. And warm up the temperature of the glow a little bit. Okay, bring the glow down, something like that. And now you can turn off all these filters one at a time. See this? Or you can go back to them and adjust them. It's a really powerful program. 
So I like the Glamour Glow, but the problem is it blows out the windows a little too much. See that? So what I can do is I can use this control point and add a control point and back it off on the windows. Use the minus control point. Now if I hold Alt down, I can just multiply them. Did a pretty good job. See, now if I toggle it on and off, you can see the windows are pretty much unaffected. That's how that works. So I'm just going to actually, let me go to Save Recipe here, and I'll try to apply this on the other images. Save us some time. Recipe name, I'm going to do Creepy Pool again. Creepy Pool. HDR. Okay, there we go. So then I'm just going to click Save. And now this is going to save it and bring it back into Lightroom. All right, so there she is in Lightroom. Looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. So now I can adjust the crop by holding down, if I hit the R key, R is the shortcut, and I can now adjust to figure out what lines I want to be horizontal and or vertical. So it's a wide angle lens, so there's definitely going to be some distortion no matter what, but I've got to make a compromise somewhere. Something like that. Now I'm just looking at the windows. That looks pretty good to my eye. And now what I can do is I can go to the tone curve, go to medium, add a little more contrast, and then I can pull this up just a touch. Then I can go up here to basic and hold the alt key down on the highlights and pull the highlights back. There we go. All right. Now what I can do is I can grab the adjustment brush with the exposure raised up. See how high I have the exposure? It's at 0.73. And down here I got the flow pretty high. Now I can paint in some information. And because the image is overall a little bit dark, this adds like a nice, you know, dodging and burning effect that, you know, a lot of guys do this. You see it all the time. This is one way to get that effect pretty easily. Really easy to add drama doing this. Uh, Wacom tablet's the way to go to get uh, more precision, you know, more accuracy, but, you know, it's a tutorial here, so I'm just trying to be pretty quick. Illustrate the point on how you can really paint in some depth in Lightroom. It's really easy. All right, that looks pretty good. I could show you before and after. See that before and after? Look at that. I can definitely do a lot more too, you know? All right, so close. And I can drag up the clarity a little bit. You know, if you like that effect. Drag up the vibrance a touch. And then I'm gonna go down here to effects and then add some heavy vignette. Drag the midpoint up, feather up, and then I'll back off the vignette a little bit. Something like that. Went a little too far. All right, so now what I I see here is driving me nuts is this um, chromatic aberration here needs to be fixed. So let me just show you one way to do it with the adjustment brush. There's the adjustment brush. I'm just going to click the effect here. I'm going to click on new, and then I'm going to double click the effect. Then what I'm going to do is drag the saturation all the way down, minus 100. See that? Now I'm going to hold the space bar and that'll bring the hand up. See that? And now I could move my image. Then I'm just going to hold the left bracket key. I'm going to press the left bracket key to make my brush smaller. And then I'm going to click and paint over that. Make the brush a little bit bigger. It's just the color purple is catching the eye. Could also use the lens correction to try and fix it that way. But I already applied the lens correction, so I wanted to show you another way to do it. You can obviously use this same technique to fix a lot of issues, but it works great for fixing stuff like this really quick. There's a little bit right here. A little bit over here. 
this is the very corner of the lens so this is expected and plus we stacked you know seven images so it's seven times the amount of chromatic aberration it kind of multiplies unfortunately the the negative flaws of the lens will multiply when you combined on uh, HDRs so anyway that got rid of that now you can see from a distance you don't even notice it now my eye doesn't even see it so that's fine I'm just gonna hit new here and then I'm gonna double click the effect then I'm gonna bring the expo exposure down and then I'm gonna paint out here to darken the outside there we go something like that there we go very good and then I can actually you could see the adjustment brush here's the adjustment brush I can click this adjustment brush and I can go back and brighten because this is the brighten that we were using before so now I'm effectively dodging and burning if I toggle this brush then I can go over here this is the brush that I use to darken the window see the mask and then I can actually paint in dark like over here to make more shadows give the appearance of um, you know more depth I want to brighten in here a little bit more brighten up this a little bit all right guys I think that's pretty good I'm gonna move on to uh, the next image but something like that looks pretty good I think shift tab to go full screen I'll just hit go there there it is full screen that's what she looks like not too bad pretty happy with it all right so let me hit shift tab bring everything back hit the F key and let's go to the next image and now what I want to do is I'm gonna open up this image in the Nix software and go through the same process all right so I'm just gonna right click and then I gotta go to edit in color effects pro 4 oh no wait I gotta go to pre sharpener first sorry right here I gotta go to raw pre sharpener it's step one it's only got two stars edit original is what I want so here we are this looks pretty good everything it's at 50 percent and I like what that did it really added crisp added some crispness to the image here so I'm just gonna click save alright so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to edit in color effects pro 4 and I'm gonna go to edit original now I can go here to my custom and click on my recipe and it's just warning you here that it's going to replace every, all your settings and that's fine with me there we go that looks pretty good temperature is a little bit too warm it's going to back that off to glow warmth but otherwise it looks pretty good you can go in here and edit them pro contrast alright I'm pretty happy with that I'm going to click save that's what's cool these recipes will get you 90 percent of the way there and then you can go in here and just tweak a couple of settings you know and, and get it dialed in perfectly really speeds up the workflow you know especially if you, you took the images in the same scene they're going to be relatively close color wise you know and editing wise assuming you have the same amount of exposures all right so to drastically speed up your workflow what we can do is we took the time to edit this photo so now we can just select this photo and then hold command down select this next photo and then hit sync and then we can just uncheck the settings that we don't want to synchronize like the local adjustments with the adjustment brush we don't want to sync that because that's the dodging and burning effect so we don't want that and we don't want to sync the crop either so I uncheck those two and just left everything else and I'm just gonna hit the sync button and now you can see now this image looks much closer to this one in editing wise anyways all right, so now I'm just going to click over here to unselect and then go back to this one. So now we can fine tune the adjustment here, of course. We can back off the vignette. We can go up here to basic. We can go to the tone curve, highlights, clarity we could back off. But what I want to do is go to the exposure and I want to dodge and burn here to show you how to bring out some of this detail quick. So first the exposure is at minus one, so I'll just do the, the windows quick why I have it selected bring in some of that detail back the information's there you just gotta 
burn it down, as they say. Go out here on the left side, like so. Hit up that spot, hit up that spot. All right, so then I'm gonna go back over here, click new, double click the effect to reset everything. And then I'm gonna raise, um, raise the exposure up to 0.8 or so. And I'm just gonna paint in here. I'm gonna bring up the flow a little on this brush. There we go. That's more what I'm looking for. And I'm just brightening up some areas here, creating some some depth. That's all that's going on. Brighten up in there a bit. Now toggle that on and off, and you can see the before and after. Look at the difference. I mean, it's gigantic. All right. So now I could obviously continue with that. You can go crazy dodging and burning. I'm just trying to give you a good overview here. Close. All right, that looks pretty good. Now let me go down to effects and pull the vignette back down a little bit. Pretty happy with something like that. And I'm just gonna four star this. And then actually I wanted to hit the R key to adjust the crop a little bit because the pool looked just slightly off. I don't know, it's just a little crooked or something. All right, right there looks pretty good. Alrighty, so there's two down. So let's open up this third one and we'll just copy the recipe and then we'll be able to do the effects in Lightroom 5. Edit in, sharpener, pre-sharpener. Yes. Edit original. Alrighty, here we go. So I'm just gonna click save. And then I'm gonna open it in the Color Effects Pro 4. There we go. Edit in Color Effects Pro 4. Edit original. And I'm just going to apply that recipe that we used before. Custom. Click on the recipe. I'm going to click on this Don't Show Again box and then click Yes. And there we are. That looks pretty darn good to me. All right. I'm just going to click Save. Thanks, Layla. I'm going to click Save. And this will open up in Lightroom in a second, and we will then copy the effects over, do our dodging and burning. All right, this image is loading, and there it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one. Then I'm going to hold Command key down, and I'm going to do Sync. And then click Synchronize. And that's going to make this one much darker. There we go. And I'll just click on this to get off of it. All right. So I do notice that the purple is a little too much in the image. So I'm just going to go up here to the tint and pull towards the green a little bit. Something like that. And then the blue. All right. That looks pretty good. Then what I want to do is I'm going to go over here to the brush and it's set for bright right now. So I will just paint in a little bright dodging here and there. Get inside the pool. And I know this is a little bit sloppy, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm just showing you how quickly you can do this. It looks and make it look pretty good. All right. So now I just got to click new. And then I gotta lower the exposure. Well, I can double click the effect, lower the exposure, and I'm just gonna paint outside. Bring in that detail back a little bit. Like so. And then we can actually darken in the edges of the pool if you wanted. It's gonna undo that right there, maybe. All right, so then uh, I'm just going to select the other brush here and brighten right over here a little more. All 
There we go. Alrighty, that looks pretty good. I'm going to close that. And then you can always, up here in the histogram, you can click and drag to adjust the overall exposure of the images. I'm going to go down here to the effect. Take a look. That looks pretty good. Let me go to this photo. I'm just going to drag the brightness up on this one. Now that I have all three images pretty much edited, I can fine tune them. And drag this up just a little bit to try to match this image. It looks pretty good. Two. And then this one here looks pretty dark. So let me raise up the uh, brightness. I'm just going to click in the center here and drag it up. There we go. Something like that. So let me hit Shift Tab. And then I'll hit L for lights out. Hit the F key for full screen. And then I can show you the three frames. There we go. There's one. There's image number two. And there's image number three. Pretty happy with how these came out. I mean, we can see how fast we did it. Like you could spend a half hour, you know, 45 minutes on each photo, really, you know, fine-tuning the dodging and burning, bringing it to Photoshop and get every nook and cranny, you know, little detail and stuff. I did all three of these super fast just to show you, you know, how quickly you can do this. HDR, it's really easy. And it's fun, too. So I'm just going to hit the L key to bring the lights back on. Hit Shift Tab to bring my panels back. And that's what we're looking at. Alright guys, so I really hope you got something out of this video tutorial. And have a great day. I'll catch up with you on Sony Alpha Lab. Feel free to ask questions if you have them. And as always, I greatly appreciate your support by using the uh, affiliate links and things like that. Keeps the cameras coming and uh, helps us you know, maintain. So have a great day. And again, be well.